Welcome, uh, dear viewers. Thank you so much for joining in again. It's Thursday. The time is uh, a few minutes just after the top of the hour, 9 p.m., 2100. We're speaking East African time, and we're glad to have you on the show. My name is Apollo Sabiti, and I'm very glad to be our host tonight on this show, just in case you're probably a first-timer. We bring you people, we bring you stories that we believe have a thing or two to impact about uh, your life. Or even better still, I love to say, and today will be no exception, even if it's just a little bit of your story, a chapter or just a part of a single chapter in your life, we'll be very glad to catch the change when it happens in your life. Now, we have an amazing lady with us tonight as our guest her name is Mrs. Christine Chayonka. I'll give her an opportunity to say hello to us and then we'll be getting busy in here for the next about 40 uh, to 50 minutes of TV airtime. We're glad to have you on the show. Good evening, Mrs. Christine. Good evening, Herbert. Uh, very, very glad to have you on the show. Uh, could you please seize the moment and say hello to our dear viewers before we get busy? Yes. Hello, viewers. Good evening to you all. It's my pleasure to be here hosted by Apollo tonight on Family TV. Yeah. And I believe we are going to have a good conversation. Thank you. I believe so too. This is Family Church of Uganda Family TV. And our hope is that everything that happens here in the studios will keep enriching lives as many as are able to catch the live shows and links much much later when the show when the live shows are done now this evening we'll be talking about legacy it is true and like they like to say oftentimes the truth hurts but it is very true as having a conversation with uh, mrs chayonka that for some people when we clock out of this place called Earth, when we sign out, when we transition and are not here anymore, some people leave no trace behind, sadly. In fact, some say that if there were things to be written about them, a small word, phrase, placard, they would read the hard words. Their lives were never fully utilized. They were never used up. We are very glad tonight to host uh, Mrs. Chayonka, uh, who uh, will tell us more about the life of a man who was widely celebrated here in Uganda, not just in Uganda, but even beyond the borders of this nation. We're talking Mr. Ivan Chayonka, now the late uh, someone, uh, former man, uh, managing director at Vivo, even through the transition, but he also, at the time of his passing, was the board chair at the National so Social Security Fund, what we f uh, mostly call NSSF. Now, before we talk about the legacy that he left behind, the trace, the illustrious career that he had, over 30 years of experience in Shell, one year of experience after the transition from Shell to now Vivo, and then crossing over to the National Social Security Fund. But before we do that, dear viewers, allow me uh, reintroduce uh, this amazing lady and also give her an opportunity to say something, uh, introduce herself. We catch her bit of the story before we have the best person who could give an account of Ivan's story. Glad to have you once yeah. again. Thank you, Apollo. Please. Christine is the former and first female academic registrar of Nkumba University. Mm -hmm. I served there for three years and retired in uh, 2017, mm -hmm. just two years after my husband passed away. But prior to that, I had served at uh, Chambogo University for nearly 14 years in the capacities of senior assistant registrar and the deputy registrar. And outside that former work, Christine is a church worker. I am currently the parish council secretary at St. Luke's Church of Uganda and Tinder. Mm. I am also the vice chairperson of the Scripture Union Uganda National Committee. 
besides that i do a lot of gossiping the gospel because i do preach mm. on foot and online i'm very much present on the online church of uganda and the saint luke's Nintendo church of uganda platforms in a nutshell that is christine i'm a mother of one and a grandmother of one boy and so it is also very possible that uh someone who is watching us has every reason to call you Jaja. Yes, I am <laughs> Jaja Mwesigwa. I call my grandson Mwesigwa because yeah. God was faithful and yeah. Mwesigwa means faithful. Faithful. Yeah. That's very right. We're very glad to have you on the show once Thank again. You. Thank you. Uh, that is it. When we're talking about legacy, it means we are looking out for the, st the things that stand out uh, in the lives of the person or the guest in question. Tonight, we're very privileged to have uh, Mrs. Christine Chayunka. Uh, like, she introduced herself very well, mm -hmm. a former academic registrar. In fact, the first female academic registrar at Nkumba University had also a spell of uh, in excess of a decade at Chambogo University. Uh, now, we want to dive in. We know Mr. Chayunka lived an illustrious career. An amazing life that probably those of us who are probably watching us you could use the help of the world wide web the www or we famously say you can google you will find every pretty much almost his life is out there yeah. when the hash went round in may 2015 yes and he'd been in nairobi before that uh, for medication and they had actually one of the stories read that he had been told to stay. Yeah. But he insisted yeah. that because of his duties, he could come back, yes. cover some work, yes. punch in some hours, do some mileage for the company. Exactly. For the welfare of many other people who are probably, you know, a lot of money is invested, yeah. a lot of tasks, I would like to assume. Mm -hmm. And like I said earlier, we couldn't have gotten a better person to speak, to give an account of his life, the legacy left behind than yourself. We want to catch the story when it is tender. How do you meet this, this amazing man? When was that? And then we'll get into his illustrious career. This amazing man we met, I was living in Vugolobe Flats yeah. with my sister. Hmm. Uh, so precisely we were waiting for the new year crossing over from 1982 to 1983. Yeah. So there was a house party in the flat just above ours. Mm. So I went there with my sister and we were having fun, just meeting friends. And what happens is that Ivan, together with another brother and his only sister, were at that party too. And I think something just happened, yeah. but I wasn't easy to get. I wasn't easy to get because there was a lot of cat and mouse running up and down. After that. After that. Okay. But eventually, I think <clears> the <throat> chemistry worked out. And here I am, I find myself Mrs. Chayonka. Yeah. That is, that is a very long story, but just cut short yeah. uh, in the interest of time. Now, we would like to, to begin... Uh, by the time you met him, was he working with Shell, like we said earlier, 30 years in one company, rising through the ranks. And this is what we say every time we come here on the show. We're not just speaking stories. We're picking people whose stories we actually believe will have a thing to change on the mental blueprint of the viewer. Mm -hmm. And if some of these, like the story tonight, really, can't speak to someone, then I don't know what can. So by the time you uh, meet Ivan, was he working with Shell already? Yes, he was. Wow. Ivan joined Shell in 1982 in October because that's when he graduated and immediately after that he joined Shell. And that is incidentally the year when I joined Macquarie University too. Hmm. Yeah. And so... Uh, he goes through the ranks yes did was he very kind enough to share the promotions as and when they came were there pressures that you had to go through that 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 emotional support they largely talk about 
you you you're a family couple i mean were, were there moments that were actually trying we would like to catch that story in its entirety everything about ivan and i were very open i mean we shared we had every day up to the time when he actually couldn't communicate anymore yeah. we always had this how was your day kind of reflection mm. and during those moments we shared how my day went how <coughs> his day went how the children's day went so we had that time around the dining table and we did share a, a lot there weren't so much pressures the only time when i felt there was pressure on ivan and me mm. was when i just completed my masters and i was vying for a career path and that is when he told me i have been told to move to nairobi mm. and here i was torn between pursuing my own career and supporting him mm. to go and pursue his initially i was reluctant to to go with him but after two weeks when he left and left us behind mm. I sat down and I reflected on what it really meant, what I wanted. I mean, I needed a family. I still wanted my job. I needed to raise my children together with their father. Mm -hmm. So I made a decision that I could put my own career on a hold and give us as a family an opportunity to thrive together. So I resigned my job at the Population Secretariat. Mm -hmm just four months into my appointment as National Programs Officer. And I moved to Nairobi where we spent just over four years. And when I came back, I picked up my life from where I'd left. Mm -hmm. yeah. How tough, how tough a call was it? Uh, Often times, even I believe mm -hmm. the viewers, yeah. you are faced with life changing, very demanding mm -hmm. uh, decisions yeah. to make, yeah. critical. To see that you, you put aside your need, your career, mm. for the sake of family, how strong would you speak to a viewer out there, a family that's watching mm. our show tonight? Mm. How important is it sometimes to put aside a personal gains, individual uh, pursuits for the benefit of the bigger picture, the family? How, how important mm. is, how critical does it get? You know, at the time when I got married, mm. I wanted to have a family yeah. and I desired for us to have a happy, thriving family. The kind of family that I did not enjoy in my home because I was born and raised in a polygamous family mm. where our dad didn't have much time for us. He was somebody that we always run away from. And here I was by the time this transition came, mm. Ivan and I were this happy family where we made so much fun. In fact, he used to wake up in the night to change the, our young daughter Yvonne. I mean, to make sure that yes, she sits on, on, on her potty, she, he changes him. He was into their lives. I mean, even when we went out, he was that kind of a person. So I just weighed the consequences of my being selfish. I call it being selfish because if I had chosen to stay, I don't think would have thrived or he would have thrived the way he did mm. because he would have now felt he wanted to anger me but I knew that I could always be able to raise my family at a certain point and get back to my career, mm. God willing. I'm one person who believes in God. And as we speak, I went to Nairobi and six months down the road, I was already offering myself in a volunteer service. And after three months, I was given a contract. So I didn't really lose much, but had I not moved with him, it would have been very strenuous for me to try and commute on the bus between uh, Kampala and Nairobi all the time mm. but we did it because I weighed and I said well he had the bigger job and we agree that let him first move and then I'll go and join of course I had prospects that I would go and do my studies there Absolutely. because Shell was willing to pay for us they paid for spouses of those who had been sent out on expatriation mm. yeah. quite quite yeah. interesting mm -hmm. Mm. And, and uh, how, how, how wide, fun, and wide was the impact on the children? Oh, for the children it was just fun. I think the best thing that ever happened to us yeah. was to move together as a family. Yeah. Because it was a totally different environment. Mm. First of all, we left this place. They didn't know a single word in Swahili. We get into Nairobi and both Swahili and French were introduced. Mm. So to be able to help them, I found myself also going to Alliance Francais mm. to be able to help them with their work. 
We had to learn the Swahili together. It was fun going out, taking them to play tennis, taking them to swim, taking them places. I mean, we even allowed them for the first time. We allowed our children to go on a school trip to Mombasa. Mm. All those kinds of experiences probably wouldn't have taken place if they had remained here in the local Ugandan system of education. Because mm. when we went there, mm. then they were attending international school. So they were exposed in a manner that has totally transformed them. Mm. Today, Yvonne speaks of it. She currently lives in the United States, mm. where she got a very good job on her own merit. Nobody, She didn't know anybody there. Mm. But she got it there, but it is because of the exposure. Probably, if we had remained in Uganda with Ivan just uh, growing through the ranks in mm. Shell, Uganda, mm probably wouldn't have met that kind of exposure that they had. So I think the transition for the children was very great. And I'm glad that I made the decision yeah. to move with the family so that I didn't deprive them of that opportunity too. All right, if it was probably a live show, I would be calling on you, Naomba, to wapigie makofi tafadari. I would like to pose a question on a personal basis. Uh, were there any triggers that you look back and go like, yeah, sure, that one some aha moments uh, very very informative i didn't want to miss that out before we get into uh, actually ivan's life yeah thank you very much apollo what triggered me the two weeks i mentioned that for two weeks when ivan went to settle in in nairobi mm. i kept my job and we had planned that we were taking turns to take the children and pick the children from school. Yeah. So Ivan used to drop them in the morning and I used to pick them at lunchtime. Mm. So these two weeks, one, I had to do both. And at that time, I was a sub-editor with the New Vision newspaper. Mm. And it was pretty hard. I mean, on some days I had a lot of work and it became such a hassle. There were fewer cars on the road, mm. but it was too much running up and down. You're concentrating, dropping the children, then coming back. And I was asking myself, what is the opportunity cost? I mean, is it all about me? I decided that it was about my family. Ivan and I valued our families more than anything else. And I knew that I could not replace a family, but I could come and change jobs like actually I eventually did. Mm. So that motivated me. By the time he came back to check on us, he found I'd already got passports and added the children's names on my passport. And I'd packed up everything and I told him, well, we are living together on Sunday as you're going back. And that was it. And we just went. That was very interesting. Very. And uh, uh, what from the corridors say that from those episodes, you're cooking something. Yeah. Please let the world know. There's no better moment than this on this show now. Yeah, thank you so much. Now from these episodes, I remember myself on the day when we had a funeral service for him. Yeah. There were many people who sat and talked and for six hours or slightly over that hmm. speaker after speaker came and talked about what ivan meant in their lives hmm. some of them in the congregation were actually shedding tears hmm. because i could see them and i thought to myself i was given very little time to talk about the ivan that i knew and the ivan that each one of them knew just bits of so I decided on that day, and I made it known to the congregation that time, that I'll find time and document what Ivan is, the Ivan that impacted their lives, so that all of them together can actually find where did Ivan touch their lives as he touched other people's lives. So I told myself I'm going to write a book. Hmm. It hasn't been easy because of the emotional breakdowns in between. But finally, finally, I have done this. And come 1st December this year, I'm going to launch that biography of Ivan's mm. titled The Fearless Leader, A Legacy of Ivan Chayonka. Because I believe there are so many things that Ivan did to those of us who got to know him. And the young people now, this is a show of the young and flourishing. Mm. There are so many young people today that would benefit from learning at least from reading, even if they didn't meet Ivan in person, yeah. they'll be able to meet him through the writings of what this person was. And I'm here to come and beef up and even help them to flourish the way Ivan flourished from university to Straight. the time when he retired, mm. keeping one job, but entering as an engineer and turning out as a manager, a people manager. Amazing.
Very amazing. Leaves me, yeah. uh, you know, jaws drop yeah. when, 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 when I think about 30 years yeah. in one place, mm -hmm. switching uh, positions, yeah. evolving and getting better by the day. And like we've been saying the whole time, by the time of his passing in 2015, uh, on the 8th of May, the sad day when the dark cloud swept over Kampala, uh, she says she looked out for the silver lining, like they say. And we're very glad that uh, when that time comes in December, we'd like to be uh, part of uh, that beautiful day. A man in whose tenure as uh, the board chair, the National Social Security Fund grew from two trillion to six trillion Ugandan shillings. Now, that's no easy feat. We would like to now inquire boldly what would you speak of him or even if there are extracts from that book, but what were his pillars? This man we're talking about, whose career, short, you know, short life, but had principles, the pillars he stood by that made him stand out. Uh, the, the managing director of NSF talked about him as a gallant leader, as you said also. So what are those things that actually he stood for? What, what were his principles that someone could borrow tonight and they might be helpful on this road of life? Yeah. Ivan was somebody who was very, very humble. Yeah. Many times, those of you who have seen his pictures or you may see his pictures, he always respectfully stood and talked to people with his hands folded at the back. He was very intelligent and very, very decisive. Mm. And incidentally, Ivan was actually the first Ugandan MD of Shell Uganda Limited. Yeah. Before that, there were always expatriates that came in. Mm. But from the mentorship that his leaders, the managers saw in him, they saw a potential in him. They kept on giving him tasks. At one point, they actually gave him two roles. Because, as one of them said in a video recording where, when they were bidding us farewell, mm -hmm. as we were going to Nairobi, yeah. they could not contain him. By 3 p.m., he had done all the work that he needed to do. So to contain him, they had to give him a double e exercise. <laughs> and that is when he was charged with building the first plastic container making plant in Uganda. Uh -huh. The first. And Shell was doing that, first of all, to make jerry cans to package kerosene yeah. because they couldn't transport kerosene all over the country. Mm. So they made that and they packaged it. And eventually, Ivan is the brain behind helping the nice house of plastics in actually producing those plastic containers. He was a very good friend to the late Mulwana. So he did all those firsts, mm. and they were very, very good. He's one person who loved people. He knew the humble beginnings that he came from, and he wanted to carry others along. So he was one person whose key, great, um, whose key assignment on earth was to groom other leaders. And at the time of dying, he had left so many other leaders who had taken over as CEOs in other multinational companies in Uganda mm. because when they saw that Ivan could do it, he sat on the boardrooms with those big companies and he made them sh believe that a Ugandan given a chance is not different from a white expatriate coming in here. Mm. We needed to grow Uganda. So if you talk about the bubu, Ivan introduced <laughs> Bubu in the leadership in this country. Yeah. And there are very many people that I know have gone ahead to head Uganda breweries, tallow oil. They've gone into different capacities. Mm. But all those people were groomed by Ivan and because he loved. At the time when he was retiring from Vivo, mm. his first preference for the person that he wanted as somebody whom he had groomed, they couldn't take him on because they felt maybe he hadn't grown much enough, enough to get to that position. At the time. At the time. Yeah. But then he brought in another Ugandan because he gave them three candidates and told them, if you get one of these three, you are going to get people who are better than Ivan. He was not worried about leaving wow. Shell and Vivo Energy wow. because he knew he had already passed on all it took. Mm -hmm. He was a man of integrity. He was a very hardworking man. He was a man who was very compassionate. I mean, he did so many things where policies needed to be changed when a situation demanded it. He did not go 
into sticking on to that. And he always told people, one of his catchphrases, mm -hmm. this is not rocket science. So there you are people that it. you can do it yeah. and we can find another way of doing it. Wow. He never believed in impossibilities. He had big dreams. That was Ivan. Wow. Today, it's probably very rare. Mm -hmm. You don't find many of those people, especially the high placed mm -hmm. uh, folks mm -hmm. who will look into your eyes mm -hmm. and tell you this is possible yeah. as long as you actually believe it. Yeah. We pick up one of the most important things that we actually celebrate mm -hmm. and we front at uh, Young and Flourishing, mm -hmm. and that is mentorship. Yeah. I would like us to slide a little bit mm -hmm. just from his life. And if you could stress, uh, before we probably go mm -hmm. for the next break, mm -hmm. if you could stress how important mm -hmm. this thing called mentorship mm -hmm. is, especially in today's world, yeah. accelerated change, overwhelming complexity, uh, too much competition, mm -hmm. the three Cs, yeah. how important is that mentorship to uh, an African child in today's setup? We can begin from a case in point here in the Ugandan capital. Mentorship is a very vital thing that happens. I am able to even sit here, I'm even able to write that book because not only did Ivan mentor people outside home, mm. but he started with us. <clears throat> mm. He gave me the strings by which I am actually able to live now. Mm. And he groomed so many other people. We all grow up not knowing what to do or how best to do it. So it is imperative for those that have tested it ahead of us, not to be selfish, but rather be generous enough to show us the reins to hold. Mm. Show us this is how you carry yourself. Just before I came here, I was talking about how do you present yourself uh, at interviews. And I was doing this on the online church of Uganda, the yeah. family hour. Yeah. Because if you don't do it, nobody knows it. So people go for interviews, they will fail, but they do not know what are those mistakes that they make. So they need somebody to come and hold their hands and show them this is the way you do it. Mm. And when you do that, you don't lose anything. Ivan never had fears that if he groomed other leaders after him, mm. they would take his positions and he would yeah. lose his job. Yeah. He knew that he was not, he knew that he was not immortal. He knew that time is going to pass when he's going to walk off the stage and somebody else has to come and he advises on the, on the sidelines. Mm. And I'm so glad that all the people that he, whose hands he held in mentorship mm. have all gone on to excel, whether they are, they are CEOs in their own right, whether they are managers at different levels, but they are all in senior management positions. And to do this, he actually even went on and initiated the CEO Roundtable in Uganda, the Presidential Roundtable, to Ooh. try and groom CEOs homegrown. So this has been happening here. And for me, it gives me a lot of gratification wow. that along the line, unknown to Ivan, one of the legacies that now came and filtered in, one of his nieces was recognized by what she was doing mm -hmm. and is actually being groomed for a position. She's already in a senior management position. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't be surprised if she also goes to head the organization where she works. Mm. But it all comes from being generous, mm. being loving, and caring about people. Mm. Just like Jesus did. I mean, we are here on Family TV. Oh, yes. Jesus taught us compassion. And I saw compassion being lived out live in Ivan. Mm. Wow. A man who uh, did his school from King's College, Budo and later went to the Ivory Tower, Makerere University, graduating with an honors. He was at Sedat, the College of Engineering, Desired Art and Technology, mm -hmm. I think previously the Faculty yeah. of Technology, and went on to do amazing stuff, mm -hmm. uh, not just here in Uganda, mm -hmm. uh, but across East Africa and uh, world over. Now, we are here today speaking about the exploits and what he basically did uh, through his life. And we've been able to catch some of the pillars mm -hmm. that kept him moving. And for me, one of the things that actually stand out uh, is, is humility. When, when, when God has placed you uh, and lifted you, um, placed you in higher glory, like we like to mm -hmm. say, yeah. and yet that never makes you forget where you started from. It's very important to also note that he treasured family, but also very compassionate 
and always hoping to make someone's life better. You mentioned something that also uh, was so bold for me. Many people do not like to train their juniors mm -hmm. because of the fear. Yeah. And uh, we're just saying that uh, you, wherever you are, whatever thing you're doing, the success that you will register in life does not depend on how much you will achieve, but how they will be able to go on about life when you are long gone. Uh, Ivan uh, Chayonka, a man who served uh, for a very long time in Shell, transitioned with Shell into Vivo, was the managing director, the first Ugandan managing director at Shell, uh, then transferred, uh, you know, transitioned into Vivo, and then at the time of his passing, we continue to say he was uh, the board chair of NSSF, the National Social Security Fund. Now, like I said before the break, we like to dedicate this last part of the show to the African youth. We believe at Young and Flourishing that the youth have a role to play in the transformation of our beloved continent, blessed continent. Huge numbers, statistics say we have the youngest population in the world. And uh, I would like to now merge that with a question and say, to some of today's youth, it's like a folly if they hear a story that someone worked in the same place for 30 years. What was the motivation in there? that you could share with someone who is watching us tonight? Ivan was a very loyal person. Mm. He was a loyal husband mm. and he was a loyal employee. He loved his job. He, lo he enjoyed working on those machines, being an engineer. Mm. Of course, he always had grease all over him with those safety shoes, yeah. which I didn't like. But <laughs> at the end of the day, I mean, you had to it, put up it, with it, it. It, it was the person, not, not the shoes. Yeah. They say patience pays. Mm. His loyalty, I mean, there was a time when he had a job offer mm. and he could have actually walked out of this while we're in Nairobi. Mm. But even after he had picked the papers after a call from uh, the Lafarge, Hima Cement, oh. he came and sat and said, but would it be a right thing for me to do this? Mm -hmm. Then he said, no. I think I owe everything to Shell. Mm. He loved to see everything that he had initiated and see it progress to the next level. Mm. He loved to see the people that he had started mentoring come and flourish. And he remembered where he came. I mean, he was an ordinary village boy mm. born somewhere in Mayuge district. Yeah. He went into some school in Mayuge itself. And then he went to Kisoko in Tororo before getting to Budo. So Budo changed his life, but he did not forget his roots. He did not forget the loyalty. He did not forget the commitment that he had lived to see in his parents. Mm. His parents were hardworking people. The father was a businessman. The mother decided to be a stay-home wife. Mm. She was a teacher, but decided to stay home. So it was just about being committed to what you are doing and allowing it to flourish. You cannot just go and pick these things on the wind. Mm. I mean, we like jumping here and there, the youth of today. But if you wait a little while, mm. Even scripture tells us that though it takes long, we should wait, it will come to pass. So we can only best be able to make the best out of it if we allow something to be nurtured. Start off with something as small as a mustard seed. You will grow in strength, you will flourish in every aspect of your life. Mm -hmm. Ivan did it and demonstrated it to us that actually somebody can do it and make it. So I encourage you to do the same. Wow. Yeah. Very, very uh, crucial for us to take home. And uh, for someone who graduated in 1982 and spent 30 years in one place, but we see the evolution. I mean, Shell Uganda and then Shell Tanzania. You mentioned uh, earlier that they had to give him another, you know, yeah. another to, to, to keep him busy. True. He was definitely turning heads yes. around. How crucial were, uh, uh, would, would you say to today's youth, mm -hmm. someone who is watching us, mm -hmm. or they could even get a link much earlier, mm -hmm. uh, we've had some, someone here talking about adaptability, mm -hmm. that, that ability to change, mm -hmm. especially when you go into new spaces. Mm -hmm. The world is changing on a daily basis as we try to close mm -hmm. 
uh, how crucial do you think that is? Uh, because today's world, anyway, will cause us to, to change if we don't want to make some of those changes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, change will change us if we don't change. We all need to learn to be flexible. We all need to be adaptable. Mm. COVID came. This is a typical example that all the youth can identify with. Absolutely. We had to adapt. I mean, some said those who knew, did not know how to use electronic gadgets to be able to communicate and do work definitely found themselves fizzling out. Mm. Ivan was able to adapt because they did a lot of refresher courses, training. I mean, getting and converting a machine man into a people manager, mm. into a marketer. I mean, he studied all around the business of Shell mm. all over, mm. from how the oil gets in, how it is marketed, who consumes it, how do you deal with all these people. If he had been rigid, definitely wouldn't have gone there. Mm. But because he allowed himself to be flexible enough and was willing to learn, mm. young people sometimes are very stubborn and they don't want to learn. So this is something that if you are humble enough you will learn and you will benefit. At the end of the day, it is you who is going to benefit, not the person who is imparting this to you. And if there are those that choose to adapt to that, they will take the lead and the rest of you will be left behind. Mm -hmm. And one time you'll just realize, oh, how did Apollo get ahead of us? Yeah. It is because Apollo was willing to adapt and was flexible enough to allow that change to come in. And that is what then makes them. So we too, if we remain stuck where we are, mm -hmm. of course, we might need a bulldozer to come and pull out there, but time is no respect of, of, of our decisions and man. Yeah. You may find that it is gone and once gone, you can never retrieve it. Yeah. So you don't want to be one person who regrets a decision when the opportunities come, grab them, be flexible. Who said that a medical doctor cannot go and be an IT specialist? Hmm. You can do it. Yeah. Some tough love coming in from uh, Mrs. Uh, Chayonka. Thank you so much for that. You can do it is the headliner here. We've been talking about a man who uh, spent almost the whole of his career in just one company and only transitioned at what we would otherwise call the peak of his career before he left and transitioned to be with the Saints. Now, we would like to uh, give you a moment uh, you said you are trying to put together a book. It's actually now what we would call a prospect. It's possible. It's actually even the dates are marked. Yeah. What are some of the take homes that someone could expect to pick from the book in summary yeah. when December comes? Yes. One key thing that you're going to be able to pick from this book yeah. is how to make decisions and timely decisions. Mm how to remain a person of integrity, irrespective of the pressures that come to bear upon your really life. Busy, yeah. How to grow and develop other leaders mm. because you are not here forever. And how to love and to love the way Jesus told us to love others as we love ourselves. Yeah. I even loved, and you are going to see what that love translated into from the stories of the people whose lives that he touched yeah. and from me, myself, I am a widow, but people come and ask me, how do you do it? There is so much, there are so many lessons that I learned mm. from the years that God granted us together. Mm. So, pick yourself a copy of this book. It's coming on, on 1st December, 2022. And if you can, by invite only, I'll be able to get to you and get you to this place. And you come and attend this live and see because i'm even going to play excerpts of some of ivan speaking himself because i've documented but i've been able to capture videos of the times when he made those speeches mm. so i want them to be live so that you can hear it and not think that i'm making up this story about ivan mm. yeah it always comes straight home when it's coming from the horse's mouth mm. now you will realize that every thursday when we come here uh, we talk about the goal the aim, the inspiration that what drives us on a daily basis is that the mental blueprint that we who are privileged to hear from these and more guests will be able to change, to dismantle some of the things that we have learned uh, over time in life. Uh, there are things that we just learn inadvertently uh, when you've been staying in a place for quite some time and you shift 
uh, on one day you could catch yourself trying to drive in the direction of uh, where you were staying before because you've done it for a very long time. Now, there are things that we have learned along the walk of life, but they are not very, very good for us to have with us. As we try to close, we would like to uh, pick a thing from you. How can that belief be dismantled so this person can become a new creation, like we like to say, someone who has been in a place for so long, how can they break camp and advance? The Book of Lamentations tells us that there is a season and a time for everything. Yeah. When times change, let us change and move with the times. Let us not be locked up in those places. Mm. Let us not fear. Just move out with courage, pray to the Lord, and be confident that better things lie out there. Mm. You will never know the good that is ahead of you unless you take a step to go and reach out for it. So my encouragement for us is that let us venture to move and we'll never regret. Yeah. All right, that is it. Uh, the closing word there was, we will never regret if we do that. Now, we would like to say thank you so much for keeping, uh, uh, for giving us uh, good company. It's been a pleasure having you on the show and we hope to catch you next week on the same station, Church of Uganda Family TV, and the show is Ask the CEO. We bring in here people whom we believe they will add something small on your plate of life, something that could change your tomorrow. We're one of those who believe that your tomorrow will be greater than today. My name is Apollo Sabeti once again, and it's been a pleasure having you on the show. We hope to catch you next time. This show is powered by Young and Flourishing, and with that we say good night.